Finley, hi, it's Michael Corcoran here. How are you? Good day, mate. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Finley. Um, can, can I ask you just specifically about lockdown since March and how it's gone from you? It looks as if you've done an awful lot of work in your fitness. Um, you seem to be in pretty good, Nick. I'm not so sure about your haircut, but that's only said <laughs> tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> no, thank you very much for the saying I was in good shape. It was probably the nicest, um, nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Um, but yeah, the haircut as well. Um, everyone was buzz cutting the haircut. So what I did was I was like, right, I'm just going to grow it. So I'm still kind of in that process now. But um, yeah, in the start of the lockdown, I uh, I was injured. I fractured my ankle and did my did the ligaments and stuff straight through it. So um, I, was, I suppose I had a lot to focus on on that. And that a lot of my attention went to the rehab and just trying to get myself literally back on my feet and get moving and, and running and um get myself back uh to full fitness so um i suppose lockdown came at a good time for me personally and i was able to bring all my attention uh to my previous injury and um fly and fit now thankfully and you seem to be enjoying your rugby an awful lot more i suppose the fact that you're involved uh you know as, as, a, as a main player in national cap not just making up the numbers i mean that's obviously something that's bringing you on as well yeah mate loving it Loving it up here, um, really enjoying working under all the coaches and with all the lads as well. And um, I think getting regular involvements has been really key for me as well. It's built up a lot, a lot of confidence and knowing that I can come on and, and do a job and um, whatever minutes I get that, I just know that I've got to take my chance when I get it. I know that if you look back at the, the England <clears> video <throat> last weekend, there's maybe something you know that you probably you can learn an awful lot from, but is that a pretty good thing? Uh, that you know, there are certainly some key learnings there, but certainly uh, there, that you, you, you know, it's it, it's an opportunity for for people to work forward. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, after most games, there's uh, you know a big review, um, big big review process, and it was no different after the England game. And there was some harsh words said, and a lot of people, uh, you know, making sure that we get the right words out of at the right uh, words out of the review, and making sure that we're all going in the right direction and learning from our mistakes. Because I think the the worst thing we could do is, is as a team is keep making the same mistakes over and over and not fix them but um look we've had a really good review we're all um heading the right direction now heading into georgia can i just ask you a final question for me if you don't mind just about georgia what you know of them i mean certainly the games that they've played so far they've been reasonably competitive for long periods of time but i mean they're not just a, a team with you know with a, with a really good pack i mean they're a they're good solid uh, 23 man effort but but they'll test you up front for quite a long period yeah, like they've always had a really strong set piece and some really big, big forwards. So we know that's going to be a huge area uh, on the weekend. And look, it's an opportunity as well for for us to go against a, a quality pack in Georgia and you know really test ourselves. And outside the forwards, they have some really explosive backs who have a lot of size as well. So um, they've been they've been playing some good rugby. I know the results haven't gone their way, but um, we're under no illusions. It's going to be a tough game, and uh, we're preparing accordingly for that. Cheers, mate. Thanks. And Thanks, buddy. Luck. Cheers. Hey, Finley. How's it going? Good day, um, mate. When's the last time you, you came on at Loosehead or played there? Was it a bit bit different? Uh, yeah, it was a little different. Um, I can't remember exactly when the last time I came on at Loosehead, so it probably was a while back. But um, I remember I got my first cap for Ireland uh, back in 2016 as a replacement at Loosehead and under similar circumstances, coming in late for church uh, back then and coming in late for, for Edburn this time. And... Look, I know it's, um, it's obviously it's a change from tight end, but it's something that I'm confident in doing. And throughout camp, I kept a lot of my eye on the loose head stuff just in case something like this was would happen. And I wouldn't. I know it's unfortunate for Ed that he couldn't play in the weekend, but um, I'd I'd kept a, an eye on all the loose head stuff. So thankfully, the transition wasn't too bad. And um, yeah, and I just had to ask a lot of questions to the likes of Ian Henson and James Ryan and Quinn Rue, the second rows about lineouts and probably burning their ears out a little bit, asking them questions, but um, I had to do what I had to do to make sure I could get, get through the detail, and uh, yeah, now I feel good. Yeah, fair play, uh, not, not an easy thing to do. You mentioned there you were enjoying working under these coaches. Like, What specifically are the things you're enjoying about how, how they're going about it? Oh, I love uh, I love working under the attack shape. Um, getting I seem to get my hands on the ball a lot, so which is which is great, and um, we're trying to play play a lot more, which is, which is brilliant, and um, kind of suits my my uh, style of play, so a lot of the pull out at the backs and inside passes, outside passes. So 
that sort of stuff is uh, right up my alley. And um, I suppose the coaches have given me a lot of confidence um, to go out there and that they back me to do a job. And look, as a player, that, that's that's huge for me. It's just that I know that they have my back. And um, when I go out, I've got to repay the faith to them. Um, people always say that props, you know, as their career goes on, they, they get better with time. Do, do you feel that's happening, that you're coming towards your peak now? What, tw- 29, you're only a young fella still, obviously. But is, is that a, is that the, the reality of, of learning as you go on scrum time particularly? Yeah, look, I think I'm coming into my prime now and I've learned how, I've made a lot of mistakes and uh, I've learned I've learned from them and look you're still always learning on and uh, it's it's look I'm just honored to be here um, and I feel like I'm coming into my prime and I feel like I can really contribute to this team and every time I get an opportunity regardless if it's 15 minutes off the bench or if it's a start that I'm not going to count my minutes I'm gonna make my minutes count so um, every opportunity I get mate I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and, and do my best for the team Cheers, go well this weekend. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Hey, Finley, how's it going? Good day, mate. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, listen, I just wanted to go back to your uh, back to last March or April, the the hand injury that you got. I, I remember reading a quote from Nigel Carroll and saying that it was like a shark <coughs> bite on your on your hand. Uh, what what exactly happened around that? Like, um, just an incident at a rook, was it? Yeah, that's a good question because uh, no one knows. It's a mystery, but. It, I've we've kind of narrowed it down to a couple of scenarios. So basically, I kind of made a tackle, and then either my finger got caught in the jersey, and then basically tore like from my web, my finger like split like all the way down that way, or it was a stud on the ground or something. But look, it all happened really quickly, and um, I remember looking up, and my hand was pretty mangled. So um, look, it, it it's it was a while back now, and it's something that I recovered really well from, and. Um, I suppose I have a, a nice wee scar there now and I tell make up stories about it saying it was a crocodile bite or a shark bite to the lads and just try and make a funny story out of it. But um yeah. And and how tough um you know, you mentioned it the the ankle injury earlier on in, in lockdown. How tough did that make lockdown for you then? You know, like were you immobile for a good bit of it and you know, just confined to home? It must have been pretty tough. Yeah, look, um I suppose the recovery was a bit different. I was doing FaceTimes a lot with Garrett Coughlin. Um, the physio and trying to you know, get that rehab done. I didn't get too much hands-on treatment for the ankle, but um, I suppose it gave me a big focus and just a goal that, right, I've got this time now in the lockdown, I can do everything I can. If whether that's icing it or doing my rehab or all the little bits physically that I could do, and it really just let me focus on that. And again, ended up getting back a good few weeks, uh, back to full fitness earlier than what they expected. So... Um, I guess that focus and that time where I, was, where I was under no pressure to get back for games, um, it really helped me. And that's it, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, you know, back then, playing for Ireland, you know, was that a part of your goal? Like, you know, to kind of think if you got back, you got, you know, back fit again. You know, you're here, you've had a good run, and maybe hopefully you could even get a start at the weekend. So um, is this exactly where you want to be right now? Yeah, look, I, um, like a lot of people, I guess, in the lockdown, you kind of, get to sit back and have a look at things and kind of plan out when things kind of get back to normal, plan things out. And uh, look, obviously playing for Ireland again in, in that no- November series was, was a huge goal of mine. And every time you know, I had to go out and do a run or do a weight session or whatever it was, I, I had that in the back of my mind that, look, this is all t- towards a goal of mine to, to get back into this Irish squad. And um, thankfully I'm here now. But when I got in as well, I just knew that all the hard work um, has got me to here, but I still have to keep that going. And like I said before, whenever I get on the field, I had to go hard and, and make sure I made an impression because, um, look, a, a lot of hard work's gone in from the injury and getting back to full fitness and then getting to here. So um, I had to do all that justice and, and keep it going. Cheers, Billy. No worries. Thank you. Okay, okay guys. We're happy Sorry. enough? Sorry, can I just get one last quick one, please, Finley? Um Chris Ashton was, was being quite critical of James Lowe after uh, the game against England, particularly for Johnny May's second try. I think he described him as too heavy and too slow. Uh, how would you respond to that sort of criticism about James as someone who's, who's seen him at close quarters? Oh, James is a serious athlete. He's explosive. He's quick. I was actually saying that to one of the boys that I'd say one of the worst people one-on-one I want is is James Lowe or Bunny in front of me because they can do me for speed but they can run over the top of me as well so um, James is an incredible incredible player and um, 
he's got some serious serious attributes so uh yeah I wouldn't really pay any attention to to what he said I I know James really well and um he's a he's a class act so yeah, yeah. you'd say that criticism is maybe just a little unfair or over the top um we are up for time and okay. we're not gonna we're not gonna waste thank any you. more thank okay you. thanks guys